2011 through 2017 BMW 335i radiator replacement. I'm Brian Esther from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you through the steps of replacing the radiator. This is the part number for the radiator. I will link it up in the description of the video. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it over by the body. And then we need to remove the lower splash yield here. So you're gonna follow around the perimeter removing the bolts. There are eight millimeter screws holding the shield on. Now we're gonna remove the two strut mount braces here on the left and right side. To do that, I'm gonna use a 16 millimeter socket, my Milwaukee M18 fuel impact gun to make quick work of that. Now we need to remove this rubber molding, so you're just going to grab it and kind of pull and pry it off. And underneath there's going to be some clips that we need to get to. So you're going to pry this molding off and set aside. Now what we're going to do is remove the clips holding this, uh, this plastic cover here on the left and right side. So you're going to remove all these clips following around. And you're going to do that for both left and right side of the vehicle. And remove those two panels. Uh, I'm just going to use a panel popping uh, clip tool right here to pull the clips out or a pair of uh, side cutters works well. You're also gonna need to pull the molding off over here up until you get to about uh, three quarters of the way up on both the left and right side. And then you can go ahead and pull the covers off. Now we need to remove the T40 bolt here, the two T30 Torx here and here. Then there's gonna be two more T30 Torx bolts here, two T40 bolts here, and then on the opposite side, two T30 bolts here and two T40 uh, torque bolts there. To get to the one in the very front, I used a torque bit uh, with a wrench. It's a tight area to get to. And then after that, I just used my impact gun to remove all the rest of the uh, torque bolts. I will leave a link for the tools in the description of the video also. Once you get this unbolted, then you're going to flip it up and there's going to be a cable attached to the bottom. You're just going to pop it out of the little catches here. Now you can take the panel and set it aside. You're going to need a bucket to put underneath the vehicle to catch coolant. Now we're gonna remove the upper radiator hose here. And to do that, you need to pick the little clip out on the side. So I'm gonna use a pick tool like this. So on the side of the radiator hose is a clip. So you're gonna slide your little pick tool in there like this. And then you just give it a pull until the clip pops out just like this. Before I pull the hose off the radiator, I'm also gonna take the vent line here off the bottle here and take that off. So it has a little clip just like the one below. So I'm gonna pop this clip up and then pull this uh, vent line off the bottle. Before I pop that hose off, I'm also going to do a little prep work by disconnecting the electrical fan here by squeezing the tab and pulling the electrical connector off and tucking it off on the side. Now on the driver's side of the radiator, just underneath the radiator hose is a torque bolt, a T30. We need to remove that bolt. After you get that removed, then we need to pull this air snorkel out. So you're just going to pull the little uh, air snorkel or squeeze the little tab on the left and right and pull the air snorkel out and set it aside. And once you get this uh, worked out, after that, we're going to uh, work the upper radiator hose off. So you're going to wiggle it back and forth. It, it takes a little bit of effort to get it to come off, but uh, wiggle it, and then you'll get it to pop off like this. And then you're just going to tuck it out of your way. So after getting the upper hose off and uh, this unbolted below right here, uh, you can see it's unbolted here. The next step we're going to do is right here on the radiator, we're going to take a flat blade screwdriver, and you're going to pry the little tab right here. And uh, you just give it a little twist, and then you pull the fan up a little bit, and then come right on the opposite side. And there's a little tab right here, so you're going to twist it and pull the fan up just a little bit. Once you get it popped free from those little catches right there, then you can take the fan and lift uh, straight up and out. So you're going to lift it straight up, and um, once you get it out like this, you just set it aside for now. Now you can go ahead and loosen the hose clamp right here and then just below it is another hose so you're going to pop off the clip and then pull that hose off and then there's this hose here, the vent hose here. You're going to pop that clip up and pull that hose off and then one below there's another, a third hose that you're going to pop the clip up and pop off. Once you get all these popped off like this, you can push the hoses off to the side after that. Now we need to remove this T30 Torx bolt here. And then after we get that, we're going to push the radiator forward. And just below this little molding is another T30 Torx bolt here. And then on the passenger side, right next to the radiator, on the side of the radiator, looking downwards, you'll need an extension, and you can get that T30 Torx bolt there. And then we'll push the radiator forward a little bit, and then we'll remove the T30 Torx bolt there. After those all four have been removed, then you can take the plastic cover and lift straight up. After unscrewing all four of the uh, screws, I left them in there. So I just leave them in there, and that way when you lift them up, they come out with the uh, with the cover all together as one piece. 
Now the thermostat has one screw to prevent the hose from sliding off the radiator here in the bottom. So once we get that uh, un unscrewed and slid back, then we'll be able to lift the radiator out. So to get to that uh, screw on the thermostat housing, we're going to need a long extension and a T30 Torx to get to that screw. Once you get it unscrewed, you push the whole thermostat housing back a quarter inch or so towards the uh, engine and then you can lift the radiator up and out of the car. So once I get the radiator out, I like to wash this area down here with water and get it all cleaned up. So when I was taking it out, I also noticed that one of my hoses was leaking from the O-rings on the radiator. So I picked the O-ring out and I went ahead and matched up a new O-ring and I just used a pick tool and I picked that O-ring out and then I put a new O-ring in there before I reinstall the uh, radiator. That's something you may want to look into or possibly replacing hoses if needed. Now we're ready to take our new radiator and slide it back down into position. Now that the new radiator slid down into position, I'm going to go ahead and restart all these hoses here. So I'm going to push the clips in and then I'm going to line up the hoses with the ports and push those hoses on until you hear the uh, hear a click. And it may be easier if you lubricate the uh, O-rings too with a little bit of grease to help slide them on. So once you get them lined up, you push them on to the click and you want to give it a little tug to make sure that these hoses do not pop back off. You want to make sure you take your time to, that all these hoses get properly installed and they, they click on and they don't pop back off. So once you get the ones on the driver's side secured, now you can go ahead and do it on the passenger side. You do the lower one here, push it on and pop the clip in and make sure it doesn't pop back off. Now you can take the thermostat and slide it back into position as you slide the hose over the port on the radiator and then tighten up the hose clamp and then reinstall the, um, the screw here that went in. It was an E8 E uh, female torque screw that you're going to reinstall. And once you get that reinstalled and the, and the hose clamp tight, then you can go ahead and take this plastic piece here and slide it back over and in position. So you'll just kind of flare the radiator forward a little bit and then slide it down. And then uh, once you get it slid down into position, you'll f you'll start all four of those screws. The, and make sure they're all four secure. And once you get all four of these re-secured and bolted back up, then we're going to uh, reinstall the fan here. These little catches at the bottom of the fan uh, have little catches at the very bottom on the uh, core support down there. So you want to make sure that they, uh, they stab down here on the uh, core support. So as you slide it in, you want to make sure it slides nice and right up against the radiator as it goes down and into the, uh, into the car here. You want to take your time and make sure you're not forcing anything in and keep a flashlight handy to check and see if it's snagging anything as you do in. So you push it in until it fully seats down in there and locks on the corner tabs. And then after that, you can go ahead and plug in the electrical connector for the fan. And then on the uh, passenger side, this little rubber molding hill, uh, that we took the screw out of, you want to slide that back in and uh, put the uh, screw back in there. Tighten that down. Then you can put a little bit of lubricant on the... Uh, radiator hose here and then slide that back into position and uh, you want to make sure you uh, give it a good push until you hear it click and then you can push the clip back in on the side then you can take the vent hose here go ahead and reattach that to the uh, bo coolant bottle and push the little tab in make sure it doesn't pop back off and after that we're going to install the air snorkel here so it, it kind of hooks underneath and the stabs in there after rehooking this the air snorkel, we can go ahead and put this uh, top cover back on by popping the cable back into position on the top cover like this. And now we can lay it down and start all the T30s and T40 uh, torque bolts. I like to start all the bolts first before I start tightening any of them down. It makes it easier to line them all up. Now you can take the two side covers here and lay those back into position and start all the plastic clips. And then you, after you get all the clips pulled, start it and you can pop the moldings back on so they just press back on and then you can take the front molding here and line it up with the uh, with the front and then you just push the molding on after that we're gonna take two strut braces go ahead and tighten those back down once again I'm using my M18 fuel 3H drive impact gun to make quick work of that I will link this up in the description of the video it's an amazing tool to have for doing jobs like this now you can go ahead and lift the vehicle back up and put the lower shields back on and uh, resecure all the eight millimeter bolts now we're ready to fill up the coolant reservoir with BMW approved coolant. So there's a little diagram on the bottle here that, that tells you how much coolant to put into it. So you're going to fill it up until you see the coolant just come up to that little yellow tab inside the bottle that says max. You fill it right up to that point. After that, we're going to start the car and run the car. 
and we're gonna run the vehicle with all the AC and heater, everything turned off. And we're gonna run it for about 10 or 15 minutes and we're gonna keep checking our coolant level. And the level may drop when the thermostat opens and then we're gonna to top it back off. And after that, we can close the uh, radiator cap up and uh, give it a good test drive and then let it cool down and double check your coolant level again. And that'll complete the job of replacing the radiator on a BMW 535i. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick any of those up, you can find those there. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And I'd like to thank you again for watching.